Hi, everyone. I'm Frank Malico, anchor reporter for KTVU Fox 2 here in the San Francisco Bay Area. Our topic today is vaccine passports, and our guest is a tech expert, also a journalist, uh, Shabani Joshi, and she joins us with more. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Uh, well, first and foremost, uh, I mean, this is a big topic right now. A lot of folks don't want to get the vaccine. Um, some have privacy concerns. First and foremost, just tell us, what is a vaccine passport? That is a great place to start, Frank, because I think even just the name causes confusion because when you say the word passport, you're thinking about a government issued document in the same way that you need a, a, a U.S. passport to travel internationally. And that's not what this is. This is not a government issued document. The Biden administration has says it is not going to be in that business. What a digital passport is, um, a vaccine passport is basically a digital way of proving your vaccination status. So instead of carrying around that white slip of paper that you get from the CDC and your vaccine provider. Instead, it is just a digital proof that you've been vaccinated. And we've been using this technology very much seamlessly in uh, our airline boarding passes. It's that same QR code that you scan to figure out your seat and to get on an airplane. And even with movie passes, we've downloaded movie passes and scanned it on our phone. It is that same sort of technology and it has a very limited amount of information. So not your entire health record, it is just your vaccine status or even your negative COVID test is what you also can put on that passport. So why are people up in arms a little bit in terms of privacy issues? If it's basically that little white card digitized on your phone, get on the plane, go into the movie. Why, why are people so worried about it? Well, I think, Frank, it's it's the nomenclature. I think that that word passport makes us feel like the government is making us do something. It is in, in charge. It is requiring things. And so I think that there's confusion around that. Um, I think the other thing is, is that right now the landscape for the digital passports is still developing too. So there's 17 different solutions out there. And the one that you get is the one that comes from your provider, not all providers have um, are offering a digital passport so people don't even know what passport can i get where do i go get it um and then i think the third thing is frank you know whenever you are talking about health information and digitizing it it is amongst the most uh, secure and privately held information for good reason so you want to make sure that your health information is secured is digitized is protected and that is why there's just so many complexities and confusions around 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 the concept and it's not new uh per se to be vaccinated to go say you want to go to ethiopia you might have to get cholera and smallpox and that kind of thing and and show proof you got them right yeah, so we've been doing this when we travel to certain places to, for certain de diseases, cholera, yellow fever. So if you travel to certain places around the globe, you're very familiar with this, but even more basic than that, when you or probably your child um, was enrolling into school, we had to show um, our proof of vaccination that we got basic vaccines um, taken care of and every state is different and allows for different exemptions. So we have already put in place this practice of proving that we've been vaccinated in order to gain entry. Certain, um, the military requires this, certain employers also require this to enter into college. So we have done this before. I think what is different is the magnitude of how it is now being enforced in our daily lives. This is brand new territory. I should say, and, and like you said, if you wanna to go to the movies, you wanna to go to a Giants game here in the Bay Area. I mean, what are people showing right now? Just that card? So you can show the card. You can show uh, there are digital apps out there that prove that. You can also show a negative COVID status. So that is the other thing that I think is going to be very important in rolling out these passports um, because people don't, not all people want to get vaccinated because of choice or because of existing medical conditions. So what also needs to happen in tandem is providing a choice for people who are not yet vaccinated, don't have access to it, choose not to get vaccinated. A negative COVID test uh, for a Giants game will suffice. You have to do it within a certain window. You often have digital proof. Um, and so what we're going to see is a vaccine passport that will include a negative COVID test along with proof of vaccination. Um, I understand some businesses too are eventually, before you can come back and go to work, you're gonna have to show uh, that you've been vaccinated as well. Um, 
What do you say to those people that are on the fence? I mean, I got a family member that not in my lifetime, I'm not getting one. Yeah. And you're going to be kind of shut out, I guess, right? I think this is a, a very tricky and critical issue. You know, we know that personal choice, personal health, um, people have the right to decide what they want to do for themselves. Yet at the same time, there was a survey, Frank, by the company called Envov, um, and they surveyed about a thousand people, a thousand workers, and they the survey results said that the most adults want employers to make the vaccine mandatory before they return to the workplace. So we have a safety issue on one side, personal choice on the other. Businesses are starting to test the water. So for example, um, Bank of America, which employs about 200,000 employees out there, and many Wall Street firms right now are saying that the days of working from home are coming to an end. JP Morgan, for example, the largest U.S. bank, is going to return to 50% capacity at the end of May. Um, part of this is going to require voluntary disclosure of vaccination and making a rollout plan that includes the safest way to, quote unquote, return to normal as possible. What we don't know yet is what the pathway is also going to look like for people who don't want to take it, who can't take it. Um, the the road the road forward has to include room for both. But right now, um, the the legal experts that I've been talking to and what we you you also know is. Um, requiring the vaccine is equivalent to no shoes, no shirt, no service. People have the right, employers have the right, restaurants have the right to say, this is our requirement. If you don't wanna follow it, go to another place and you have the personal choice to be able to do that. So we are in this very early stages. It is going to continue to evolve, but um, the policy is really going to be set when we get critical mass of big employers coming back to the workforce. Yeah, I guess it's part of the pandemic. We're kind of learning as we go along yeah. here. Um, what do you think lies ahead? Or eventually, is there going to be like a like a, a state app that gets you on a plane or a government app that, that says you're clear and free, that kind of thing? So what I've been talking to with tech experts is what they're trying to do on the back end side is allow for choices for different health providers um, to work with whatever company makes the most sense for them because they have an existing relationship. They already have access to the data. They know they can keep it secure, but make a vaccine passport sim similar to how we use a credit card, right? So we can get a Discover card, a Visa card, a MasterCard, issued by whatever bank we choose to get it from, but it will work at every restaurant we go to, at every uh, uh, shopper or retailer we go to, it will work in a foreign country. That is the goal of where we want vaccine passports to head. Now, the issue is, is that we need everybody to work together because we don't have this central database. The CDC does not hold on to records of who's been vaccinated and who does not. So your the, the app doesn't go back to the CDC and say yes or no. The individual providers have to provide that, put it in the app. And so it is actually a technology consortium, a technology problem that is going to make this more seamless. And like I said, work kind of like a credit card, which we don't even have to think about anymore. Uh, do you think uh, in, a, in a year or so, it's going to be just commonplace to go out to dinner and say uh, party of two, uh, boom, boom, that kind of thing? It could be, you know, uh, I, I can't, I'm not a fortune teller. We know everything is evolving, but what we do know is that if you want to go on a cruise this summer, you are going to need to show proof of vaccination. If you want to travel to countries like Iceland, you are going to have to be vaccinated before you go. We know that Hawaii is evaluating some sort of way of, uh, of proving vaccination status as well. So what we do know is that the way forward is going to involve some sort of validation that you've either been vaccinated or have had a negative COVID test. And technology is the easiest way to do that. And the biggest and the brightest minds are working on that right now. And a lot of them are right here in the Bay Area. That's right. All right. If people want to get more information or get in touch uh, with you, how do they do it? Oh, you can find me on my website, shibanijoshi.com. All right, Sabana Joshi, thank you very much, tech expert and uh, journalist. Uh, I'm just going to move us here real quick to, if I may, there we go, gallery. All right, hey, Shabani, thank you very much. Really you appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you. Nice to be in touch. All right, if you'd like more information as well, uh, I'm Frank Malicote. You can go to newsnowfox.com.